Hello and welcome to another RenPy tutorial. So in this one, I'm going to be covering a question that I got from a viewer recently as a comment on one of my recent videos. So this was asked by viewer Jamie Andreessen. I apologize if I'm butchering the pronunciation of your name. Uh, please forgive me. Um, but Jamie asked a very interesting question. He wanted to apply a little bit more realism to his characters and wanted to know if it was possible to make your character sprites blink automatically. So I had a way that I was doing this before, but it was kind of long and kind of a pain, and I knew that there was an easier way to do it, and I eventually figured one out. So I'm going to show you how to do that here. And as a bonus, I'm going to show you how to create an animated background that you can use to get some really cool effects as well. So before we get started, don't forget to hit the like button if you get something out of this video, and subscribe if you haven't already so you never miss one of my new videos. And with that, let's go ahead and jump right in. So I'm using uh, basically the same project that I've used for my previous RenPy videos, but I've cleared out my script.rpy, so I just have the start label and the return that ends the game. Uh, my, characters, uh, uh, my characters file is still pretty much the same, um, but that's where we're actually going to start. We're going to add a little bit to this. And actually, let me show you the way that I have my files uh, structured really quickly. So I've added a couple of new images to my image folder. I've created a new character uh, named Chelsea. And so I have two different images. I have a Chelsea neutral. Let me see if I can zoom in on that. There we go. I've got a Chelsea neutral with eyes open. Um, and then I've got a Chelsea neutral with eyes closed. And so that's going to be my blinking image. So what you will need is two identical character models but one of them with eyes closed and one of them is eyes open and we're going to basically tell our program to automatically uh, switch between the two of those. Um, I also have three different background images. Once again these images are identical except they all have different lighting. So I'm using a red, a blue, and a white light and I just have them changing to different positions on each one of these three backgrounds. So if you need more information on how to set this kind of things up and uh, how to get your models, be sure to check out my other channel. Um, I will link to it in the description below. So check that out where I cover DAS 3D and how to get these graphics on your own computer. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to define a new character. We're going to define our Chelsea character in much the same way that we did our other ones. It's actually gonna be identical to our Luna character. So again, check out my early videos if you need uh, if you need to know how to do all of this, because I'm going to go through this part pretty quickly. Uh, so I'm not going to put in a custom color. We're just going to use our default color, which I believe is purple for her name. All right. And then after that, um, we're going to define a new image. Um, again, just like we did up here, except we're going to do an image statement. So basically, we're going to create a block of code that's going to execute every time we call this image. Uh, so we only have to use one line, but it's going to run a snippet of code that's about five or six lines long. Um, and really, it can be just about as long as you want. So you can create a very complex animation if you want to, but we're going to keep ours kind of simple. So we're going to call this Chelsea, uh, we'll just call it Chelsea Neutral. And instead of using an equal sign, because we're not setting this equal to one image, we're going to use a colon, because every time we call this character, again, we're going to call a block of code. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to show our base image, which is Chelsea Neutral. And we're going to set it to where she blinks every five seconds. So as soon as it pulls this image up, we want to pause 5.0. So we're going to pause for five seconds. Then we're going to do our blink image. So I find that the blink looks a little bit more natural um, if you use a dissolve transition. It kind of looks like the character is actually blinking their eyes. Even though they aren't, we're just fading between two images. But it creates a pretty convincing optical illusion. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to show our Chelsea neutral blink image, is what I've called this one. And we're going to do that with a dissolve... Let me zoom in my text a little bit, make that a little bit easier to read for everybody. There we go. We're going to do that with a dissolve. And I think before when I use dissolve statements, I've always done it with a lowercase d. And whenever you do that, like if I just do with dissolve, it does an automatic dissolve transition. And I think it takes, if I'm not mistaken, I think it takes one second to transition. I'm not positive about that, but something like that. But you can also set a custom amount of time if you want it to take a very specific amount of time to dissolve between two images. 
If you do that, you have to do a capital D, and then in parentheses, you put in seconds how long you want the transition to be. So I was playing around this with this a little bit before, and I found a 0 0.3 second transition to work pretty well. So as soon as it starts that transition, it's automatically going to run the next block of code. So if I just do Chelsea neutral blink, she's going to blink. And then if I do Chelsea uh, neutral with her eyes open on the next one, it's not going to wait for this dissolve transition. It's just going to call the next one. So it's just going to pop her eyes back open. And then it's just going to keep on going uh, down the code block like that. So after we call this dissolve transition, we have to put in a pause to make sure that it allows for the full dissolve to happen. And we're just going to pause for the same number of seconds that we used for our dissolve. So we're just going to pause for the 0 0.3 seconds. After that, we're going to call our original image again the same way. We're going to do another 0 0.3 second dissolve and then another 0 0.3 second pause. And then after that, we're going to repeat this block indefinitely. So the way that we do that is to just add a repeat statement at the bottom. So now whenever we call this Chelsea neutral image, what is actually going to happen is it's going to show Chelsea neutral for five seconds. Then she's going to close her eyes for 0.3 seconds and then open her eyes for 0.3 seconds. And then it's going to pause for another five seconds and it'll just repeat that loop over and over again. All right, let's go ahead and give that a try. Let me pop back over to our script. And I'm going to go ahead and call a background image. Let's call BG color light one is the name that I gave to the first one. And then we're going to show Chelsea neutral. And I'm going to go ahead and put in just uh, an empty block of dialogue so the game doesn't immediately end. There we go. That's just so we can uh, kind of admire our work. All right, let me pull that up. Let me launch the project. And again, I'm using the same project as before, so I'm going to have the same title screen as in my earlier videos. Uh, but when I go into the actual game, it's going to be our new script. All right, here we go. Let's go to start. And it shows Chelsea, shows the background. And then after five seconds, we should get a blink. There it is. And then let's wait on it. And if we wait another five seconds, there we go, we get another blink. So again, you can play with these numbers a little bit. If you want more time between blinks or less time, all you have to do is change that 5.0 pause statement. Or if you want her blinks to go slower or faster, you change those 0.3s. So lower numbers will go faster and higher numbers will go more slowly. And is it still going? There we go, yeah, all right. So far, so good. Uh, you can also try it without the dissolve. You might get might like it better with just an abrupt blink. This is just the way that I like to do it. So again, feel free to play around with it and see what you can come up with. All right, next I'm going to show you how to do the animated background. So I played a couple of visual novels before where they had scenes that were set in like dance clubs or places with flashing lights and they would uh, make the background fade between different lighting setups. So the background is identical but just the lighting changes and it gives the impression of, again, just different colored lights that are fading back and forth. So it was a really cool effect, and I wanted to try something like that, but I used red, blue, and white lights, which actually gives it more of a police car siren kind of vibe, which is actually kind of cool, I think. So if you want to do something with a police car, then you can do something like this, and it'll give the impression there's a police car with its uh, lights on uh, behind the camera, and it'll just flash back and forth between these colors. And to do that, we're going to declare another image, just like we did with Chelsea Neutral except I'm going to call this one BG Lights. And what we're going to do now, again, is just what we did before, except I'm going to call each one of these images, uh, oops, let me make sure that's right, yeah, BG Color Light 1, uh, with a dissolve of 1.0. So now it's going to take one second to dissolve between each image. And remember, after that, you have to put in a pause statement equal to the uh, time of your dissolve. So we're going to pause for 1.0. Then after that, BG color light two with dissolve. And also be sure you use the capital D for dissolve or it will throw an error. Pause for 1.0. BG color light three with dissolve. 1.0 and then another pause statement and then 
as before repeat. So again, now whenever we call up this BG lights image, it's going to show the first image for one second, or it's gonna take a full second to dissolve to the second one, and then a second to dissolve to the third one, and then a second to dissolve back to the first one, and we're just gonna go back to the beginning of that block and repeat it over and over and over again indefinitely. Um, and what this should do is create an even transition between each of those different lighting setups, so it's gonna look kind of like a rotating light. Um, all right, let me go back to my script, and now for this one, I'm gonna get rid of that scene, and I'm gonna put in our new image that we declared which is BG, oops, lights with an S. Make sure that's correct or that will definitely throw up an error. All right, let's give that a try. And there we go. Now you can see the different colors fading back and forth. And also we have our Chelsea character that will blink every five seconds just as she did before. And that's pretty much it. Again, use this as a starting point to come up with your own ideas and try different things. Um, you can animate between different poses if you want to or facial expressions on your character. You can use as many different lighting setups as you want to, increase or decrease the times, just whatever you want to try. Just, uh, yeah, you just have fun with it and experiment. And again, thank you very much to Jamie for answering for asking this question. This is a very, very good question that I was kind of meaning to tackle and I ended up getting to it sooner rather than later. So if you have any questions or any comments if you have any issues feel free to drop them in the comments below especially if there's something that you want to see from a future video covering either RenPy, uh, Python Arcade, game making, Python programming in general just the normal stuff that I cover on my channel if there's anything else you want to see feel free to let me know and I'll see about doing that on a video in the near future and again thank you for watching and we will see you in the next one goodbye